I'm gonna jump right into it and start chatting about resolutions and goal setting because I think this is a really important topic and as we head into 2017, I would love to help set you guys up for success. Basically, we've got two kinds of people, right? We've got people who are like, I don't do the resolutions thing. The new year is just another time of year and why do we have to make a big deal of it? Like, what's the big deal? It's just another month on the calendar. And then there's another group of people who really see January and the new year as a clean slate, right? It's like, Everybody is in a different mindset as soon as we turn the calendar. Now, I've definitely been kind of in both camps in the past, and I think there is something very natural about the fact that it is a new year. We do start a new calendar. We come back to like new TV seasons. We have so many new things that happen in the new year, and not the least of which is if you work in an office, which I presume most of you do, either an office or a school or some kind of setting where the calendar does make a really big difference, people come back from the holidays and everybody's kind of in a different state of mind. They're ready to start fresh. People aren't trying to sabotage you with cookies and brownies and all kinds of treats in the break room, for example. And the idea that we can kind of start anew and create new habits and be a little bit healthier in the new year it really makes sense and it's a great time of year to do it. And so I'm definitely not somebody who would say, you know, don't make resolutions, that stuff doesn't matter, nobody sticks to them because I think the reason that people might not stick to a resolution is that you're not creating it as either an intention or a goal for the year, you're just kind of throwing it out there willy-nilly and that's something that I would say maybe not to do. I've got a couple of ideas for you guys for the people who aren't really into the idea of a resolution, you think you want to just kind of have something that you keep in mind all year. I think the idea of having either a word or a sentence or a phrase that you kind of come back to throughout the year. So let's just say I've had this word in mind for a while that I wanted to, I, I wanted this word to be something that people would think of when they thought of me or an exchange with me or maybe in a list of words that somebody might use to describe me. Like I wanted this word to be one of those words. And for me, that word has been vibrant. Like I, I would hope that that's a word that somebody might use to describe me, even if it's not everybody that I have an interaction with, that people who, you know, might come to one of my events or something, like I wanted that to be a word that I could really fall back on. And, you know, I thought about it for 2015, heading into 2016, and I never really like wrote it down and thought about what that would mean for what I would have to do every day, every week, every month throughout the year in order for that to be something that is a word that I really embodied. And I think so much more that if we look at the year ahead and pick a word or a phrase for ourselves, if we look at what that would mean in different areas of our life, so I've got a bunch of different areas of our lives that we can look at for goal setting, but I'm just saying if you're somebody who doesn't wanna write down hard and fast goals, that's fine, but I would challenge you to maybe write down something that you feel is important and meaningful to you that would help you move through the world in such a way that next year at this time, right now it's the end of 2016, can you look back on 2016 and think, here's what I accomplished in 2016, or did it feel like time was just slipping away from you? And so the idea of having something to anchor you, whether it's a word or a phrase of how you, how you wanna move through that year, or if it's actual tangible goals, which if you're a business owner or you're trying to start a business, I challenge you to lean towards the actual goal setting side, not kind of the more touchy feely side of things. But for example, one of the women on my team is gonna have a baby in the early part of next year. and a word that she really wanted to talk about is balance. Like that's a word that she's really trying to embody for next year. And I think when you're in a situation where you're about to face a whole lot of new things, maybe setting a whole bunch of goals is not a realistic or good idea, you know? Maybe just having a goal of giving yourself some grace and trying to feel balanced in your life as best you can, whatever that means for you, that's a great goal. You know, that's a great resolution. That's a great mindset to be in. So that's kind of one idea of the type of person or the type of life situation you might be in where writing down hard and fast goals might be a little too much pressure. Like maybe this is not the year, but I'll tell you, if you're starting a business, if you're growing a business, if you are trying to move a career forward, 
you need to have some real goals. And I might, I might have said in the past that I didn't really have any, you know, hard and fast tangible goals for the last four years. But if I really think about it, I've had books published every calendar year. Well, I guess not in 2015. Each of those years I've actually had something that was a really big goal that was kind of set for me. Like I set the goal, but you know, I had the deadlines and I had the publisher to answer to. And I can look back on each of those years and say that was a huge accomplishment in each of those years. But looking ahead to next year, there, there's not another book. So I needed to sit down and set some goals. So I did this with my team. I did this with my husband. We did some different things with the team than I did with my husband, but I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the, the categories of goals that my husband and I sat down and started working on. We haven't finished working through it yet. We just started right after Thanksgiving and we're probably gonna finish it up, obviously, before we head into the new year. The tangible areas for goal setting that I want you to think about are, and these are in no particular order, and I'm gonna challenge you to put them in a specific order that might be right for you after this video. We've got health career, financial, personal, relationship, home, spiritual, and then I've got kind of a wild card category and you guys can tell me what you think. On our list of categories, we had travel as one, but I think adventure could be one, just family or something that's a little more, I mean, I had relationship for me that's sort of family because myself and my husband that's our little family but travel is a really important thing to us so we wanted to have that as a whole separate category so you might have a little bit of a different set of categories two ways that you can order these categories when my husband and I sat down to put these in an order he was looking at them like what's the most important to me and I'm gonna put them in order that way and then I'm gonna write goals for each of those but I was looking at it in terms of which one do I think needs the most work? And I actually think both of those methods are extremely valid. And I think that we can probably do something useful with both methods, right? So if we were to take each of these and put them in an order. So let's just say, and I'm gonna guess for a lot of you, your health is probably of utmost importance to you. We know that family and relationships are important, but if you don't have your health, I'm not really sure how you can be present and be contributing in a healthy relationship and to a good family balance. So I'm just gonna throw it out there and go out on a limb and say that to most of us here, our health is of utmost importance. So it's probably number one when we put these categories in an order of what is the most important thing to me. Now the other way is what do I think I need to work on the most? What I think would be really interesting is when you see how the categories align, if you give them a number ranking and you say my health is most important to me and the thing that I need to work on the most is my health, what that's gonna tell you is actually that probably for the last year, you just haven't been doing it or there's still more work to do, or that could illuminate something for you, especially if you're a parent or especially if you're a mom, if you say, you know what, my health is of utmost importance and it's the thing I need to work on the most, and you realize that your family might be too to your health. I mean, I'm not a parent, so I'm gonna just throw it out there because I feel like even as a mom, you have to be healthy first. But if you realize when you put those in order that you've been putting your family first, but your health is most important to you and it's the thing that you need to work on the most, then that's gonna help you realign as you set your intentions and your goals for the following year. So I really want you guys to think about all those different categories in terms of what matters most to you and what needs to be worked on the most. And I think that it can be overwhelming if you're trying to create eight different categories of goals to be setting and things to write down that you want to accomplish in the next year. You know, if you're like, oh my gosh, there's eight categories. How am I gonna get through all of this? That's where the hierarchy comes in. That's where putting things in order comes into play because you can't focus on everything all the time. You have to focus on one thing at a time and you have to prioritize things. And so I think that this method might help you. What we're gonna do with this goal setting worksheet is allow you to write down something that you wanna accomplish in the next year. And then we've got kind of the spiral diagram and you guys can tell us if you think that that's effective. But 
let's just say your idea is to travel to New Zealand next year and that's a pretty big goal you've got to break that down a bit into like when will you have the time off to do it who else is involved in that do you have to you know pick a hotel pick a flight how much is it gonna cost do you need to save the money for it and and for some of you all of those factors are at play and for some of you maybe only like the scheduling and you know getting the time off maybe you already have the money saved but actually breaking that down into how will you accomplish that because i know that a lot of you watching have this feeling where the year goes by and you don't know what happened and you didn't accomplish something you wanted to accomplish but if you were to write it down and break it down into small steps and figure out how to actually do that you would look back on the year and feel really good about yourself and one thing that's gonna happen as you accomplish some of your goals is if you're trying to grow and build a business, you will feel more capable in all areas of your life if you're achieving something in any area of your life. And so you know how it feels, a lot of you, to just get healthier or to lose weight or to hit a PR at the gym and like lift that heavy deadlift. It makes you feel like, you know what, if I can do this, then I can do something else. Like I put my mind to it and I can accomplish and achieve something. And so I want you guys to be able to have that in other areas of your life. Those are the categories. That's how I think we can break it down. We can break it down further into what am I going to do on a monthly basis, weekly basis, daily basis to accomplish that. I really want you guys to be able to have small accomplishments along the way, even if like let's just say you set a goal to take this trip to New Zealand and it's going to cost X amount of dollars and it's going to involve, you know, other people and time off and all that. And what if you don't get to make that trip? But at the same time, what if the trip, let's just say the trip was going to cost $10,000. What if you save $8,000, but you didn't get the 10, you look back on last year and instead of saying, well, I didn't go to New Zealand, you can say, well, I saved $8,000. So I'll probably get there this year. So, you know, when we break these things down and we see that, on the way to these bigger goals, we can accomplish small things, then we don't feel as let down. And that's where I think a lot of people fail with resolutions. Like you don't make a resolution to lose 20 pounds. You have to make a resolution to show up at the gym every day, to be following a program, to you know keep what's going in the pie hole in check and not kind of just throw it all away because one day gets a little bit hard. You have to know that it's gonna be every single day. The other thing I want you guys to remember is if you're going to create a goal, you have to be able to measure it. So you have to be able to, as I said about like saving money is a really easy one to think about. But if you say, you know, I want to start a retirement fund, you, you can't just say you want to do it. You have, you have to actually do it. You have to sign up. You have to get the papers filled out. Or, you know, if it's a mattress fund, whatever, stick the money in your mattress, however much money you want to save every week. <laughs> you don't have to sign up with a financial advisor. You do whatever you want to do to save your money. I'm definitely not going to tell you what to do about that. But whatever it is, you have to just get it started and make small steps towards it every single week. And I'll tell you guys what, after doing a podcast for more than five years, 275 episodes later no way would I ever have thought to myself you know what let's start a podcast because I would like to record over 200 hours of audio answering questions from people you just don't go into it that way you know but staying committed and making sure that you follow through on things consistently is what will make all the difference Hopefully you guys enjoyed that, got something out of it, and make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel, put up new videos every single week. Hopefully you can get some fun, helpful, interesting tips about health and life and all that kind of good stuff, as well as business and motivation, inspiration. We'll be creating some new videos soon for hashtag Diane Unscripted. I'll be talking more about business and some things more related to marketing and growing your business and all of that because I know you guys are just kind of dying for more information on that. Whew, I was toasted. I was sweat. I'm gonna adjust my seat. Just gonna judge my hair a little bit. That's the cat. Check out the gun show. <laughs> all right, I'll see you next week. Enrollment is now officially open for the Balanced Bites Masterclass. 
Learn more at balancebites.com slash masterclass.